Brethren, the presentation that I've taken from Solomon today is entitled Masonic Aprons. In summary, it's a short history of the Masonic Apron from its operative beginnings to the present time. The apron is the most visible identification feature of a Freemason and the item that is often referred to by non-Masons when talking about our order. The apron, of course, is an inheritance from the days when Masons were operative and needed a protective garment. When they were working with blocks of stone and rough edges and chips of stone would have been a constant hazard. In those days, the apron would have been much longer and have covered the lower legs as well as the torso. It probably would have been supported by laces around the neck as well as the waist. The apron would have been made from calf or sheepskin as they would have been stronger and have been readily available in the Middle Ages. There would have been no ornamentation on the operative mason's apron but it would have distinguished him from other tradespeople who would have worn different styles of apron. We do know that even in the very early part of the Middle Ages, there were trade guilds and aprons were used in a ceremonial form and there is a record of a mason bequeathing his apron decorated with letters that have a Masonic allusion even today. When the first Grand Lodge was formed in 1717, it brought together Freemasons from four active lodges in London, one of which was a lodge of operative Masons and the others apparently were formed of members who, in the main, were not connected with the trade. During the 18th century, the aprons worn in lodges evolved from the basic white lambskin apron to other more exotic designs. Certainly, in the Hogarth print, Knight, the Worshipful Master and his Tyler are wearing plain white aprons, but these soon became unfashionable. As masonry spread throughout Europe and around the world, it would appear that fancier designs were created, and in some respects these served to illustrate the degree or degrees which were being worked, or to which the apron's owner belonged. In 1767, the modern Grand Lodge issued an instruction which allowed members of particular lodges to also line their aprons with white silk. It is, it is apparent from the engravings and reports of the time that many of the brethren, grand officers or not, were edging their aprons with blue silk. It is also of interest to note that the method of wearing the apron was customarily different from the brethren in the three degrees. The entered apprentice wore his with the flap turned inside so that it was invisible. The fellow craft wore his with the flap up and fixed to one of his waistcoat buttons, while the master's flap hangs down on the outside. Such traditions hang on in some parts of the country today, and you may observe some lodges in different provinces where the fellow craft and entered apprentice wear their apron in such a manner. Reports from those days also indicate that on Grand Lodge meeting days, the Grand Officer's aprons were finely decorated. After 1760, the ornamentation of aprons rapidly increased and it is evidently became fashionable for masons to adopt more flamboyant designs on their aprons, and certainly by the early 1800s, some masons had aprons printed, which contained symbols from other side degrees, etc. In the case of the Ancients Grand Lodge, which had been formed in 1751 as a rival to the Premier Grand Lodge, this was a practical approach as the craft lodge could also work other degrees, such as Royal Arch, Mark, Royal Arch Mariner and Knights Templar, and a copper plate used to print these aprons is on loan to the Rutland Masonic Museum in Leicester. What is more, some of these aprons were extremely costly, and it was reported in the Freemasons magazine of 1793 that at the consecration of the Shakespeare Lodge number 516 Stratford-on-Avon, 
Many wore aprons from five to ten pounds each. In modern terms, that would be many hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. When the two Grand Lodges, moderns and ancients, merged in December 1813 to form the United Grand Lodge of England, there was a great amount of work to do to rationalise constitutions, certificates and regalia, and the opportunity was taken to start afresh in many cases. The creeping additions and decorations to aprons was one area that had to be addressed. Fortunately, the brethren involved in the rationalisation had made such a good job of this work that the design of aprons stayed virtually unchanged to this day. The constitutions and regulations of 1815, the United Grand Lodge, laid down the standards for regalia. This is now defined in precise details, the dimensions, colours and ornamentation of each apron and its type. The only significant difference is this regalia from our current regalia was that the colour of the edging of a master mason's apron is described as sky blue in 1815, rather than light blue as today. This may just have been bad drafting because the term light blue is used elsewhere in the document. The width of the edging was defined in 1815 to be one and a half inches deep rather than two inches maximum as today. Officers and past officers of lodges would have the emblems of their office in silver or white in the centre of their apron in 1815, while today only present officers can do so. In our current times, the officers also have a double circle around the emblem of their office, in which may be inserted the name and number of their lodge. The only significant change to these regulations has been that members of the Prince of Wales Lodge may add an edging of garter blue ribbon to the internal border of the light blue edging. The regalia for the Grand Master and his deputy appear to have evolved as time went on. Initially, collars rather than chains were worn, according to portraits of the high rulers, but definitions of change evolved later for all Grand Officers. The aprons of the Grand Master, his deputy and the Provincial Grand Masters also evolved through time. Initially, Provincial Grand Masters had a pomegranate as the emblem in the centre of the apron, with no embroidery around the edge. It seems that the provincial grandmasters changed to full embroidery around their aprons sometime in the 1860s, but the first mention in the Book of Constitutions is 1884. Surviving mid-Victorian aprons sometimes show a transitional pattern with pomegranates spaced around the apron border. The final definition was that the aprons of masters and past masters of lodges. The rosettes were to be replaced by three several sets of two right angles formed by perpendicular lines on horizontal lines. In 1815, these emblems were to be of ribbon of the appropriate colour for past masters which was sky blue, and for Grand Officers, which was garter blue or gold. If you visit a Masonic Museum, take a little time to seek out these old aprons. They are well worth a look. I hope that's been helpful, brethren, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for your very kind attention.